The History of the Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire is a six-volume work by the English historian Edward Gibbon. It traces Western civilization, as well as the Islamic and Mongolian conquests, from the height of the Roman Empire to the fall of Byzantium. Volume 1 was published in 1776 and went through six printings. 1. Volumes 2 and 3 were published in 1781, Volumes 4, 5, and Vi in 1788-1789. The original volumes were published in quarto sections, a common publishing practice of the time. The work covers the history, from 98 to 1590, of the Roman Empire, the history of early Christianity and then of the Roman State Church, and the history of Europe and discusses the decline of the Roman Empire in the East and West. Because of its heavy use of primary sources, unusual at the time, its methodology became a model for later historians. 7. This led to Gibbons being called the first modern historian of ancient Rome. 8. His work remains a great literary achievement and a very readable introduction to the period, but considerable progress has since been made in history and archaeology and his interpretations no longer represent current academic knowledge or thought. In the world of late antiquity, 1971, Peter Brown offers an alternative interpretation of the period between the 2nd and 8th centuries ad, and framing the early Middle Ages, 2005, by Christopher Wickham presents hitherto unavailable evidence from both documentary and archaeological sources. Thesis Gibbon offers an explanation for the fall of the Roman Empire, a task made difficult by a lack of comprehensive written sources, though he was not the only historian to attempt it. According to Gibbon, the Roman Empire succumbed to barbarian invasions in large part due to the gradual loss of civic virtue among its citizens. He began an ongoing controversy about the role of Christianity but he gave great weight to other causes of internal decline and to attacks from outside the empire. The story of its ruin is simple and obvious, and, instead of inquiring why the Roman Empire was destroyed, we should rather be surprised that it had subsisted so long. The victorious legions, who, in distant wars, acquired the vices of strangers and mercenaries, first oppressed the freedom of the Republic, and afterwards violated the majesty of the purple. The emperors, anxious for their personal safety and the public peace, were reduced to the base expedient of corrupting the discipline which rendered them alike formidable to their sovereign and to the enemy. The vigor of the military government was relaxed, and finally dissolved, by the partial institutions of Constantine, and the Roman world was overwhelmed by a deluge of barbarians. Edward Gibbon. The Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire. General Observations on the Fall of the Roman Empire in the West, Chapter 38 Like other Enlightenment thinkers and British citizens of the age steeped in institutional anti-Catholicism, Gibbon held in contempt the Middle Ages as a priest-ridden, superstitious Dark Age. It was not until his own era, the Age of Reason, with its emphasis on rational thought, it was believed, that human history could resume its progress. Gibbon's Reflections Gibbon's initial plan was to write a history of the decline and fall of the city of Rome, and only later expanded his scope to the whole Roman Empire. Although he published other books, Gibbon devoted much of his life to this one work, 1772-89. His autobiography Memoirs of My Life and Writings is devoted largely to his reflections on how the book virtually became his life. He compared the publication of each succeeding volume to a newborn child of each succeeding.